Hey everyone, welcome back to the Film Fund Podcast. I'm your host, founder, and executive producer at the Film Fund, Thomas Verity. I'm also an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and film festival judge. I started the Film Fund to give filmmakers an easier, alternative way to get their films funded. Instead of working on a screenplay, crowdfunding campaign, or grant application, you write one sentence pitching your film for a chance to receive up to $10,000 and other prizes to make it. Our spring 2022 narrative and documentary funding contest have just closed, but if you're listening to this at a later date, make sure to check out thefilmfund.co for the most up-to-date information. We run contests regularly, and you can just find our most up-to-date information on the website. Um, so we may be hosting a contest when you're listening to this episode. So check it out, filmfund.co. Write one sentence to win up to $10,000 to make your film. Today we have Carlos Novoa, winner of a $400 kid split gift card that helped uh, him with equipment rentals for his film. Carlos, thank you so much for coming. Can you um, tell us a little bit more about yourself? Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, um, I am I'm a writer um, and an actor. Well, I guess by night, because by day I'm a college student at, <laughs> um, at ASU okay. studying psychology. But uh, for a couple of years now I've been writing and recently, um, I kind of rekindled a love for acting that I'd kind of messed with when I was in school. But um, I had a, a performance recently, just like a really small performance recently. And just like I felt alive, like really alive for the first time in a long time. Oh, that's awesome. So I decided I'm like, you know what? Um, I love writing all this stuff. And I love film. I love movies and all that. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to decide to like step into this. And I saw the film fund. And I said, you know, what? like I love writing and I think it's awesome to like write all these scripts and uh, maybe one day sell them as specs and all that. But um, I had this hunger to create. So I'm like, you know what? Um, I saw the film fund and there was this awesome opportunity without having to do like a million applications and write these massive mm-hmm. treatments and send this massive application to hear back like, oh, um, we're not really interested right now. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. To be able to create something that um, I could make, I could, I could film, I could be in without having to do all that work and still be something that I was proud of. So that's what, um, mm-hmm. that's how I found you guys. And it was really this awesome opportunity to really um, express myself. So thank you for that. That's awesome. And uh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you so much for the kind words. We uh, That's our whole thing here at the Film Fund. We want to make the grants are awesome. You know, screening screen contests are awesome. Fellowships are awesome. But they're a lot of work. Mm-hmm. They're very involved. Like you said, they're pages and pages of applications and, you know, sometimes treatments and proposals and you know we just wanted to offer a simpler alternative to all of that um and so that's kind of how we get started I, I was submitting to grants and it was just so overwhelming um and i was like you know what there has to be a simpler way to do this so um thank you so much i'm glad that resonated with me and that's that's so awesome too that you i love that you use the words you felt alive when you were acting uh, or performing like that's so cool tell me a little bit more about that what kind of performance was it um it was funny enough it was like a, a little it was kind of like a play for a church and it was like this okay. really like simple like they wanted someone to pretend that they were a talk show host and i was like okay yeah. i'll pretend to be a talk show host and to interview like like santa claus <laughs> and other like fictional <laughs> characters and i was uh-huh. like okay um i i hadn't acted in a while but i'm like you know what? it's fine i'll do it I, I don't mind helping out and i did it and the moment that i stepped out onto the stage like we'd rehearse it and whatever no i was like okay it's whatever but the moment that i stepped out onto the stage and the audience was there and like the music was playing and i had the mic in my hand it was like it was like a whole different thing like i felt like i was like Mm. just like like on a different planet like i was just firing on a different cylinder things were just clicking it differently it was just like it was like a high like that you can't describe yeah that's how um well, not at a church, but that's how Tarantino started out with the filmmaking. He wanted to, uh, he, he used directing as a vehicle for his acting career. Um, that's why he's, you know, casted himself mm-hmm. in those roles. Uh, obviously, he took off as a filmmaker more than an actor, but um, you never know. I just think that's an interesting mm-hmm. parallel. Um, you know, I mean, I do the same thing. Mostly, I, it started out because I didn't want to have to pay another actor <laughs> on the budget. I was like, oh, I can do this. I'll just throw myself in the role. But then I realized, like, oh yeah i can do the hitchcock thing or the tarantino mm-hmm. thing and just like throw myself in as a cameo have like one or two lines um so i've been doing that for my shorts but that's so awesome um what are some of the highlights about your work i know you said you're you're fairly new in terms of 
filmmaking, but you said you've been writing for a while. Yeah, I've been writing, just writing in general for a couple of years now, um, mainly like copy and stuff. But mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, I like rediscovered a love for film because when I was a kid, I liked movies, but I, ne- I was never the, the person who we love to hear the story of, oh, for the moment I was five, I knew I wanted to make movies. I knew I wanted, there was no other mm-hmm. path. And that wasn't ever me. I was like really good at school. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like school, but I was just really good at it. But that was the way it was. So that was the expectation, like, be good at school. And that's why I'm, I still am at school, <laughs> um, because that was just the path. But recently, I realized, like, you've made, like, a bunch of, like, home movies on your phone, like, more than most people have made. Like, I look back and I'm like, why do you have so many, like, home films that, with your brother just, like, doing really stupid things and you pretending like you're, like, this top director Mm-hmm. And it's because, like, I don't know, I guess that was in there somewhere. I never realized it. So I started screenwriting two years ago, a year and a half, somewhere along there. Okay. And I started writing just because I'm like, you know what? I felt like this need to, like, I couldn't describe it. But recently, um, Adam Sandler gave a commencement speech and I heard it. And he said that we creatives, we create because we have to make people feel something. And I was like, that mm-hmm. that's what it is. There it is. That's what I haven't been able to describe all these years. And he's like, we have to make we want to make mm-hmm. people cry or laugh or feel joy or feel anger or feel fear. And I'm like, that's what it is. That's what I was trying to like say for all this time. It's like, why are you doing this? Because I have like this intrinsic desire to make people like feel something. The same way when I watch the movie, mm-hmm. I feel something. Like my favorite I movies. Exactly. Uh-huh, my favorite movies aren't like these massive masterpieces some of my favorite movies are movies that people hate like seeking a friend for the end of the world people like hate that movie and i and i I can see why the people don't like that movie but i adore that movie because it made me feel Mm -hmm. something for like a moment i sat there and i'm like oh my god like i legitimately feel something for these two characters in this moment yeah is it weird the age like yeah there are some odd moments in there but it made me feel something Mm -hmm. and yeah that's the most important uh thing for me too like we watch there there's the i call it the holy shit moment after a film that really affects me and really makes me feel something it's like this powerful it's hard to describe it's just this powerful like overwhelming moment of silence really it's like wow i just watched something important i just watched something that really affected me whether it made me laugh a lot or whether it made me angry like you said or Mm -hmm. made me you know upset um or even cry like it's it's just such a powerful medium and mm-hmm. that's what i want to um do as well so we have that we have that in common um are there certain things you you focus on in terms of writing certain themes or topics i don't think so i think i'm really eclectic in mm-hmm. in what i write i feel like one of the big things for me that i like to focus on i guess i don't do it consciously but i found that it's always like something that's really mundane and human mm-hmm. just in its in its nature because even the pitch that i i won with it doesn't sound mundane it was something about two people getting caught up in like an alien invasion mm. but it doesn't sound mundane. It uh-huh. and it seems it seems like wow that's weird uh-huh. and it is you weird to read it i have it in front of me oh really can you read it yeah sure so we've been with the film founder policy is like we don't usually read the sentences until they're released uh, until the filmmakers complete their films, but I've been noticing like a lot of filmmakers don't care, <laughs> and they just they don't care that we read their sentences and they want to share it. So is that cool with you? Yeah. If we read your pitch, okay, cool. Um, so here we go. Two college students on a road trip find themselves entangled in a war of worlds when their radio intercepts an otherworldly broadcast. Need the money to cover equipment costs, camera, microphones, and so obviously. Uh, that is why it qualified for the kid split gift card prize. You need equipment, camera, and microphones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I love this pitch because, I mean, it just has such great words in it too, uh, like entangled, intercepts. They're such good action words. They're they're powerful. They're um, conflict, you know, driven. They create a conflict there. That's always what we look for um, in the film fund conflict. You know, what's driving the story forward? What are these opposing forces? And here you have a war <laughs> of the worlds. <laughs> Uh, the radio intercepts an otherworldly broadcast. They're entangled. Just a lot of a lot of good words there. But sorry, I'm totally stepping on your answer. <laughs> I, no, asked, uh, I asked you about your pitch. So tell me about this pitch. I thought of it. What it's really about. 
um it's a funny story really um so i was driving my brother to school one day and we're listening to the radio because we listen to the radio every single day and one day the radio just completely like started bugging out and Mm -hmm. it just went to like the static and i could not for the life of me get it back to like music like any station anything at all like i was just scrolling and scrolling and it was just static the whole time and then i i got bored and i stopped and he, mm-hmm. he looked at me and was like, you know what? This sounds like those military broadcasts in movies. Because it was like all muffly and like cracking mm-hmm. and stuff. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So then we're driving and then he moves it. And then it gets to this really high pitched like buzzing station. And he's like, and this one sounds like an alien station from a movie. And I was like, well, sure, whatever. <laughs> so I drop him off. <laughs> and then that That's same so day funny. was the day that... um. I was telling you that I had like this need to like create something. Like I was feeling this, mm. this like desire, like I have to make something. And then it just like, it clicked. Like it, like it was just like, it was like meant to be like that same day that happens. I'm like, wait, did he just had like an amazing movie idea. Mm-hmm. And I'm not giving him credit for it. I'm stealing it, but. <laughs> um, well, they say great artists steal, right? Exactly. So I, I, I saw it right from under him. No, um, he's helping me. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, it was just that. And I'm like, wait, what if this was actually like a military alien thing? And I thought, well, yeah, that's really cool. But those movies don't really intrigue me as much as I love to see a good old massive CGI blockbuster. I really I care more about the characters. Like I told you, like in Seeking a Friend for the Other World, I don't care that the world's ending. Like it's these two characters that really enamor me. Mm-hmm. So what this film has really become, it's these two characters. um, Charlie and Amy is what they're called. It's these two characters who, yeah, they're on a road trip. And yeah, the radio intercepts some things that they really don't want to hear. But what it's really about is these two characters who have been too scared to tell each other what they really feel about each other. And I've been really just tiptoeing mm-hmm. around it. And they've both been complacent with where they are in their lives. Having to face that. Even though the world is like kind of falling apart around them. I like that you have you have the conflict of their relationship and where that's going to end. And then you have the more external conflict of the world falling apart around them. I like that a lot. Um, do, for your work, do you typically draw inspiration from things that happen in real life? Not typically. There are some things that just like things that happen. It's like and they affect me to a point that I have to write about them because I don't know how else mm. to express myself. But usually what inspires me is like, I just have like a tonal, like I'll have like a frame in my mind. And that frame, it could be like, like I had an idea um, that I submitted to this last film fund that didn't get through sadly, but um, I believe in it. So maybe I'll try it again. And it was just a a coffee cup. It was like this really cold frame of a coffee cup on a table. Mm -hmm. And it inspired this really like, this really human idea of like grief and confrontation. And I was like, wow, like that's incredible. And I haven't personally thank like, thank God I haven't personally had to deal with grief to that extent and confrontation Mm -hmm. to that extent and having to really like break through barriers of intimacy and those things. But those, they're all human, human events. They're all human concepts that we all grasp. We all understand. And once I get a tone down, then it's it's off to the races once i understand the tone it's like the story just like fills itself mm-hmm. in i love that that's so important and that's the, something i think a lot of writers or maybe beginning writers um kind of overlook or they don't they don't cognizantly think of it not like oh i'm going to write in this tone or this voice it just sort of happens but i think that's super important or super unique that you do think of that um like while you're writing and and that it informs the story um, because every story is going to have a different tone, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and that whether it depends on the genre too. Like I just picked up um, it by Stephen King and you know, the tone of that is different than the tone of this other book I read by him called the mist. And it's just like, mm-hmm. it really depends. I mean, they're both horror, but um, it really depends on the story and the specific tone and the settings and everything. And I just think that's super awesome that you're recognizing that um especially because you said you've only been writing for a short time so that's um you know hats off to you that's awesome 
If you, um, I know you said you're you're currently a psychology major. Yes. Do you have any plans to go to film school after you complete that degree, or are you just going to kind of do the self-taught uh, independent filmmaker route? Uh, I would a lot of us love <laughs> to go to film school. I'm kind of right now in. I want to see how this pans out by the time I finish this degree, because mm-hmm. the end of this degree is like really close. This is an and, undergrad degree. Yeah, it's undergrad. So yeah, like I'm really close to finishing this degree, and I want to see how this pans out. Like I'm, I'm trying different things. I'm writing. Obviously, I'm making the, I'm making the short. Um, mm-hmm. I'm acting. I'm trying, I'm trying to see where things go. If I see that, hey, maybe this is something that I could do. This is something that I could say I could do. Maybe sure, I'll, I would love to go to film school. I know that there's a big community mm-hmm. there. I've taken some courses. Um, I don't think it's necessary, but I know that community is a massive thing, and I would absolutely, I'd love to yeah. do that. Um, but maybe who knows? Maybe things take off in one direction. I'm, I'm not beholden to anything. We'll say. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Keeping an open mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I've reached the point where I don't think I'm going to go to film school. It's unless I don't know, just running the film fund and my own filmmaking career. Mm-hmm. It's like I would have to put everything on hold, but. Um, I, when I was considering going to film school, and I don't want to, I never like to say I'm 100% out on anything. I mean, these circumstances will change and mm-hmm. I'll go one day, but um, right now I've decided not to. But anyway, um, where I was going with that was, where was I going with that? I totally just lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm a bad host. Um, well, anyway, um, do you think after you complete your degree, you'll do, you'll try to do filmmaking full time? Or are you really waiting to see how this, uh, this project pans out? I mean, the dream, the absolute, absolute dream is, yes, I would, I, I would love to, I would, it would be an absolute dream to be able to do that. Am I naive enough to believe that that can happen? I'd say so. I do think that it's mm-hmm. certainly a possibility and I don't, I wouldn't have come into this if I didn't really believe I could do it. And mm-hmm. is that a little narcissism coming through? Probably because a million people try to do this and 900,000 of them fail but um, I'm willing to try this and I want to see how this goes. And I mean, obviously, if I fall flat on my face, then I'll reconsider. But I do think that this is honestly something that that could pan out. I think that maybe maybe I don't become the best filmmaker, but maybe my writing becomes something worth looking at. Or maybe my acting becomes something that I could live off of. Who knows? I, I'm, just, I'm willing to, to follow all these paths. See, I don't even think it's being naive. I think it's being one optimistic it's being Mm -hmm. um driven it's being confident um you know you're you have to go into something creative with it's it's a it's a risky venture you're putting yourself out there Mm -hmm. um creatively and it's i don't think naive is the right word i think it's really i think a lot of other people would say oh that's naive you're never going to make it but Mm -hmm you're just so driven that you have to, um, right. you have to try something and you may fall on your face. And mm-hmm. if you do fall on your face, I don't even think you should give up and pivot to something else. I think you should just try again and make another film because everyone's first film is usually not the best thing they're ever going to make. Right. It might not be terrible, uh-huh. um, but it, it, and it might be good. You never know. Uh-huh. Like it might be amazing. My first film was awful. Like I, <laughs> I would never, sh- I would never show it to anyone today. Like it was bad. Uh-huh. But I learned how to be on set. I learned how to direct actors who were just my friends. Um, but you know, I kept making those crappy little films with my friends, and then I got a little better and a little mm-hmm. better, and got a budget to make you know a bigger project. So you just got to keep going. But I love the, I love your attitude with it. Like I, I see you as just open to mm-hmm. possibility and that's really what you need to be you need to have that um that curiosity and that that desire to create something no matter what like the consequences of that mm-hmm. are or what the outcomes of that are going to be and that's just super important when you're creating um especially when you're first starting out like a lot of people get overwhelmed and they think it's daunting and they don't even start you just, uh-huh. you just gotta, gotta do it right. you have to realize like hey this might suck at the end of the day um or you know there could be something about this that somebody sees that that really resonates with them, whether it's my acting or my writing or the the filmmaking part of it. Mm-hmm. But that's just so awesome. I just think all of our I'm gassing you up because I love our winners and I love I love our projects um, and I'm super excited to see 
um, where this goes. What um, what's the status of your project? Where are you at with it? Um, so we are. Well, I am polishing up um, final draft right now of the script, um, mid casting, which is good. That's exciting. Um, one more roll to fill. Actually, that's really exciting. Um, crew is pretty much locked in. It's not a big one, but it'll do the job. Um, most of the location stuff is pretty much sorted because when I wrote this, I knew that I needed to write something that I'm not going to need a lot of location permits. So mm-hmm. this thing takes place like in a car. Like I knew I, okay. I needed a car right. because yeah, the car radio and a house and I live in a house. So those two <laughs> things are sorted, mm-hmm. which was, I think the really big thing for me when, when I was writing this, it was, I need to actually be able to make this because I write, the thing was I'm writing a lot of things, but the chance of these things getting made anytime soon is like near none. Like the chance mm-hmm. of this 90 page sci-fi feature getting made anytime soon is like near none. Like even if I do sell this, it's probably going to get made in like years. And I wanted mm-hmm. to say that I, I can make now. So yeah. that's the beauty of this. Now that I, I got what I need, I got the equipment funding. This thing is really going to, it can get off its feet pretty soon. So yeah, we're going to probably enter production i don't know i'm aiming for the next couple of months i wanted to do it during the summer but i'm in arizona and it gets really really hot yeah <laughs> i can imagine it was just like i was driving we're in uh philly here or i'm in philly uh-huh. and my car said 99 yesterday when i was driving it was there was like a heat advisory there was the air quality i was like i could not deal with this <laughs> like on the regular in may um, so I feel you there. It's so bad, and the cam- camera's overheat, and it's like I don't want to have to be wiping mm. sweat off every like five seconds, as if I was like yeah. a stray dog. Like this is <laughs> not what I want to be doing right now. So I'm like, mm. we could just push it back. I, I mean, I don't mind pushing. It. I think it's probably better for everyone if I just push it back a tiny bit because yeah. being in a car at 115 degrees with a camera yeah, for hours a day does brutal. not sound like a good time. Mm-mm, no, not at all. And things get pushed back. My last short, we pushed back a couple of times. Um, it happens. But you have to do what's best for you and what's best for the production. Um, at the end of the day, like a few months or even like a year in the grand scheme of things is not is a huge much? deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we want you to get it as soon as done as soon as possible so we can share it with the community and everything. But we definitely, you know, <laughs> don't want you overheating in the car at all. Um, so, yeah, I definitely feel you there. Um, would you have plans on submitting it to film festivals after i do want to um and a lot of it depends on the, the final product because if i see it and it's mm-hmm. like well that's crap i'm not gonna waste the yeah. money but um yeah I, I do have that belief that you know if if what i see in my head gets somewhat put on the screen i think it it's just worth a shot and even if it doesn't mm-hmm. get in it's, it's worth the experience of of doing it um just of learning of even asking for fee waivers that's always a great experience just trying it and just mm. putting ourselves out there and who knows maybe one of them sticks and that's also another amazing experience yeah. so yeah I'm, I'm all for it yeah absolutely um i that first film i made um i submitted it to film festivals it didn't get into any <laughs> Un- unsurprisingly looking back but like it was good like you said it was a good experience going through it um learning how the process works what festivals to submit to um yeah we definitely rec- if you you know have the the resources to do so and i would definitely try to ask for free waivers too and start making those relationships because that's always important too do you have any advice uh for our community of filmmakers so much and a lot of it feels unfounded <laughs> but i think it's i think it's fair because i've i've gotten so much advice and i feel like i need to just pass it on so it's not really coming from me but a lot of it's just to what i got from a lot of people that i read or people that i met is just you have to start doing it like you're never mm-hmm. gonna actually get anywhere if you don't start doing it it doesn't matter like how good your idea is it doesn't matter how amazing you think your your characters are if you never actually put them on the page like you can tell someone how cool your your spec idea is and it's like oh that's awesome can i read it it's like oh, well i haven't actually written it yet it's like well what like why do i care what does it matter you're mm-hmm. never gonna actually get anywhere if you don't actually do it like it doesn't matter how great your script is if you never start making it or if you never start marketing it like mm-hmm. it's always taking that next step and it's never just being what's the word? stagnant you never want to be stagnant with it and that's what i that's what i learned and especially in this well in this industry in this community there was always this sense of 
you're never going to be able to make it. There's too many people. And I was like, well, that's disheartening. What am I supposed to do now? Yeah. And what I, I don't know what I've gathered, what I read is it's going to be a lot easier said than done, but at least what, from what I've gathered and I, I had this idea and I couldn't ever put it into words. And then I read Matthew McConaughey's um, biography, autobiography, and he put it this way. And it was, if you believe that you should be the starter, play to the point that they don't have a, they don't have a doubt. Mm. And it was just that simple. It was like well, simple, not easy, but it's like, if you think that you should be, the, if you think that you should win this competition, if you think you should get cast in this role, if you think that your script should get um, optioned, don't give them a choice. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you want to get cast at this point, it became like, Oh, so you're telling me that if I have to be cast, all I have to do is just be the best person who walks in there doable. And yeah, that mm-hmm. sounds really, really arrogant, but it, it's the truth. If you want to be the person who gets cast, if you want your film to be the one that gets into the festival, it has to be, it doesn't have to be the best one, but if you make it the best one, it's going to get in. If right. you, if you submit the best film, it's going to get in. If you submit mm-hmm. the best script, it's going to get in. If you submit the best self tape, you're going to get the role. It's mm-hmm. just that simple. And if you don't, if, and you know that you submitted the best one, Sam Jackson put it this way. It's like, well, I feel bad for you guys because your movie would have been better if I was in it. And I was like, mm-hmm. wow. And yeah, obviously I'm not Sam Jackson. <laughs> and maybe most of us aren't going to be Sam Jackson. But if I know that I was the best person to that walked in that room and I didn't get that role, I was like, well, too bad for you guys. Whatever movie mm-hmm. does cast me, they're going to have a really good actor. And you guys yeah. messed up. Dude, I love that. I love that attitude. You're going places. I can feel it. It's so exciting. I can't wait to see how this film pans out. Pun intended. Um, <laughs> what are some of your favorite things about the film fund? I love the film fund. Time to plug the film fund. Um, <laughs> yep, plug plug away. <laughs> no, the film fund was really that day that I was sitting in the car and I was looking through things. I saw grants and scholarships, and I was like, "Wow, this is going to be a massive pain in the butt <laughs> to mm-hmm. to make this movie." And then I found the film fund, and it was like one sentence up to ten grand. I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like, is this a joke? Is this real?" <laughs> and there was like submissions closed, and I was like, "Dang." Well, and it, it, it like just closed like two days before I found it. Oh, and man. I was like, wow, that sucks. But then it opened up like four weeks later. And mm. I think it's just like the ease of entry. Like it's not, it's not a massive fee. And what I loved, it was like, we use the fee that you give us to like fund the films. Like, it's not mm. like we're taking it for ourselves. It's not like we just want you guys to give us money. So like, no, like this fee that you're giving us is what we actually use to fund people. And it was just like, like it's simple. It requires you to actually make a good sentence. And I'd say that I made a good sentence, but. I was like, dang it, did I write that? Because like, you need to have a solid sentence. <laughs> yes. And it's it really is, it's just, it's simple. It's wonderful. The community is great. I, I saw some of the films um, that had won before, like Sunday Dinner. I'm like, wow, that's really good. Like, that is yeah, a, really Dinner. solid. Like, it's it was short. It was funny. I was like, wow, like, that's amazing. I saw Treehouse. Um, I love jazz. I was like, wow, like, these are really, really good. It was inspirational. I'm like, wow, this is a community of people who are, one passionate about what they do they're pretty good at what they do and they care about helping each other and i was like wow like this is a really awesome place to be um and then i got i got the invite to be here i'm like you know and it's like they're not gatekeeping either it doesn't feel like oh only our people can be here only our established people can be here no it's like everyone like come on like you can join us um we want to see your idea come to fruition we want to see you succeed Mm -hmm. we want to see you at least try this Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that you love the film fund. <laughs> that's awesome. It, it means a lot too that you've checked out our previous work too, because that's something we're really, really proud of. A lot of our projects are still in, a lot of them are getting into production now, but they were paused because of COVID. Um, mm-hmm. So like there are a ton of projects that we're still waiting on, you know, to wrap. Um, but it's so cool that you checked out the previous ones. I love that. Like I really, um, like it means, it does mean so much when I get these emails back from filmmakers are like oh we just wrap production or here's a rough cut like i always say like update us no matter how small mm-hmm. the update is like i don't even care what it is i just want to hear about your project like if it can't like i don't know something about like i always think about food because i guess i'm italian and i like to eat but like first thing that popped in my mind was like catering like oh we had like awesome catering like any, anything any stupid little detail mm-hmm. i just love hearing about the productions um and how they go and that, however i can help I'm always happy to. Um, but yeah, community is a big thing here. We have the Discord server. Definitely feel free to hop in there, chat with everybody. Um, people share videos they've been working on. Um, they'll ask, you know, they'll t- post in the freelancing channel. You know, I have this 
this uh, opportunity here, or I'm looking for a DP, or I'm looking for a sound person. We get some of that stuff sometimes too. So definitely love the community and uh, awesome that you value it too, because we're so mm -hmm. happy to have you here. What, um, oh, this is a question I wanted to ask. It's not really related to what we were just talking about <laughs> at all, but um, I love school too. I was a big nerd and I, just, uh -huh. I was good at school. I loved it. Um, do you find that what you're learning in school, whether it's your psych classes or mm -hmm. otherwise, do you find that it informs your work at all that you, you use what you're learning in school in your work? I feel like it has to just because of, even if it's not conscious, it's because of how much time that I spend or people spend at school. Like what we learned, like it has to, like I was writing a script about uh, schizophrenic and I was realizing like, like, I wouldn't have thought about that if I hadn't studied schizophrenia for like the last three, four years. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's not that it's like, I'm doing it because I started this. Like, oh, I want to write. It wasn't like I was sitting in class. Like, I want to write about this now. It was like, no, it was right. just like something that it happened. And I was sitting there and I was like, what if this guy is like waking up to voices and he doesn't know where they're coming from? I'm like, wait, that's schizophrenia, isn't it? And I was like, there mm -hmm. it is. And I started writing it. Mm -hmm. And there was just the sense of like, you know what? Maybe there is some stuff here. And it, other things, I've taken English courses and literature is awesome. I took an English course and we didn't read anything. We just watched a bunch of movies. And I was like, well, that's that's great. <laughs> that's where the yeah, Kurosawa awesome. reference came from. Okay. Thank you, English. Um, and it's just, we're sitting there and we're, we're learning all this, learning about Kurosawa. And I'm like, well, that's, that's freaking cool. I, I rock with that. Mm -hmm. And I got to sit there. I got to study the way that he that he used the film to the way that he ended up filming later in his career. I got to study um, steady cam versus handheld cam. I'm like, that's like, that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't even supposed to be a film course. I just, it just happened and ended up being a film mm -hmm. course on accident. Right. So yeah, all that stuff definitely um, resonates with me from tonally. I'm always, um, we're a sponge of what we, of what we learn. We're a sponge of what is taught to us. We're a sponge of what we see. So all that stuff, even incidentally, I can look back at everything that I write and be like, well, that's, that's from a, a class I took. That's from a book I read. That's from a movie I saw. That's from an instructor that affected me. That's from mm -hmm. a conversation I had. Like, it's really all just a massive amalgamation of yeah. who we're around. Yeah, it's life. Everything affects you, and it ends up seeping into your work, whether you realize it at the time or not. Um, and I always think school is such an interesting thing because it's so structured, mm -hmm. and you're just constantly being injected with ideas and new information. And it's got to go somewhere. So people who have creative outlets, like writing, at least for me, like I, I found when I was in school, I found myself using like my, ex what I was experiencing in my courses. Like I had this one mm -hmm. film called Son of Blackbeard. And at the time we, I was in this English course and we we read this poem called This Be the Verse by Philip Larkin. And it's about like why you shouldn't have kids. It starts out like, they fuck you up, your mom and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. Uh, they fill you with the the something they had, and leaving it anyway. It's all about like not having kids and why you shouldn't have kids. And kids are just the worst. Um, and it was written in this like this weird diction where like words were left out. It was like this be the verse, um, and it reminded me of pirate speak. And at the same time, I was reading. Um, Hellboy, like the graphic novel. And uh -huh. one of the, the stories I was reading was about Blackbeard. And like it just clicked. I was like, this weird poem we just read, Blackbeard, Pirate Speak. I combined the two ideas. And I was like, what if Blackbeard, the pirate, had a son? And this whole poem is about like why you shouldn't have a son. And the son is just like messing up his legacy and ruining his life. Anyway, enough about me. But I just wanted to bring that up because I think it's so interesting how we take what's going on in our lives mm -hmm. at the current time and we um kind of at least i do i like inject them into my uh -huh. work kind of almost like you said unconsciously like not realizing i'm doing it. Right. i don't sit down and be like i want to write a script about this it's just kind mm -hmm. of like it happens and then you look back right. and you realize oh that's because like i wrote an alien script it's like that's because i took a course on ufos um <laughs> and this just kind of happened so i think that's awesome and i was curious how um how your experience is being in school and writing on the side uh were you know influenced by what you were doing and it sounds like they were so that's super cool you know it's mm -hmm. always we have a lot of blogs on the film fund about where to come up with ideas how to come up with ideas 
And there are certain things if you check out our blog, or it's not the blog now, it's uh, the research, I'm sorry, the learn page, we rebranded it to mm -hmm. learn. Um, and there's a lot of posts on there about creativity and creativity techniques and how to come up with ideas. And it's a lot harder than you think, but it's also a lot easier than you think because you can just use what's going on in the world around you. You just need to kind of pay attention and, right. and like consciously extract sometimes what is going on. Um, anyway, enough about my ramblings about how to come up with ideas and school. Carlos, you got a lot going on. I'm excited to see this project and where it goes. Um, what do you, what is next for you in the next year or so? Um, I'm going to finish school. Hopefully um, we finish radio. We'll finish radio. We'll see that. We're going <laughs> to finish radio. Um, I'm going to keep writing. I'm going to keep acting. Um, well, I've got some other scripts that I want to work on. They're, they're simple enough. I've got some other stuff I want to create. So I think I could probably have a couple of things done within the next year. So I'm really excited. I think this is going to be, um, it's going to be an event, an eventful next couple of months. So I'm really excited. Oh yeah. I'm excited as well. Carlos, I want to thank you again for coming on the show, taking the spine, the spine, taking the time to speak with us. Uh, do you have social media we could check you out on? Yeah, you can check me out on um, Instagram, Carlos N15. Um, I'll be there. Um, I'll be updating radio as soon as it gets as soon as it gets on the ground. I'll be updating it, um, and I'll probably be promoting it. So yeah, awesome. Uh, everybody, check him out. We'll add his handle in the show notes so you can check him out on Instagram and see updates on the production as it unfolds. I want to thank everyone for tuning in and listening. I want to remind you that our spring contests just closed at the time of this recording, but we do have in contests regularly. Um, oh my God, I can't talk this morning. I literally, I'm not going to lie. I like rolled out of bed and it's like, oh shit, I have this podcast. <laughs> I'm like, I haven't had any coffee Same. yet, which I, I'm, I think I say that on every episode, but uh, trying to read this script here. Check our social channels. We have awesome prizes and check our web website regularly for the most up-to-date information on our contests because we do host them uh throughout the year if you're listening at a later date check out our blog it's blog.thefilmfund.co for great filmmaking and producing tips sign up for our newsletter follow us on social media at the film fund on instagram film fund co on facebook simply film fund on twitter and the film fund on linkedin if you want to do that corporate john um yeah that's it we have an ebook check out our resources page for that I also put the merchandise link back on the homepage at the bottom if you want to get a sick t-shirt like I'm wearing. We're doing lots of plugs today. Again, I want to thank everyone for listening. Check out thefilmfund.co for the most up-to-date contest information. And check your email, too, because that's really the biggest communication tool we use, our email newsletter. Um, we've been posting these episodes about once a month on Fridays. So listen wherever you listen to podcasts. Our website, YouTube, is a big podcasting platform now. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, Carlos, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you're listening, keep keep at it. Keep making it. It's never going to get done if you don't do it. Awesome. Wise words to end on. Thanks, Carlos. Talk to everybody soon. Thank you. Thank you.